um, using the Zoom application. Uh, one of our main uh, objectives here today, because of the questions that we're getting at the Center for Church Development, is how um, how do we do online worship well? And uh, the, the communications department has done a little bit about talking about some of the technical um, things that you can do to do online worship, but we want to talk a little bit about just some best practices, different models, things that people are doing to connect people um, and, and build community um, around, around a worship service. So uh, to begin, I just want to kind of run through what our agenda is so you're kind of aware of what the pieces will be, and then, um, and then we'll get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask each of our three presenters, um, Greg, Manya, and Andrew, to introduce themselves. And uh, after they've given a brief introduction, I'll sort of direct a prompt to each of them and let them take about 10 or 15 minutes to share what they've been doing and how, how it's worked for them um, and any other insights that they might have. During their presentation, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat box. And we're going to try to keep a tally of those so that we can, during our question and response time, direct those questions to them when, uh, when that time comes up. After they've each had a chance to share, um, Reverend Masters is going to facilitate our question and response time, and, and I'm going to kind of take some notes. Um, if, if, if you have ideas or resources or, or websites um, that you want to link and throw in the chat room, we're going to put together, I'm going to take all the notes of our call and put together a document that I send you afterwards that will have any websites that are referenced, any resources that are referenced, and things like that so that you have those in hand to um, to help you um, moving forward. So uh, without any further ado then, um, I'm going to uh, initially invite Greg, uh, Reverend Gregory uh, Neal to introduce himself, and then after he's done, um, Manya and then um, Andrew. So if you, if you all could just do a two or three minute brief introduction, who you are, where you're serving, and uh, what, what we need to know about you before, uh, before you start. So Gregory, can uh, you go first? Certainly, certainly. I'm Greg Neal. I'm the uh, pastor at First United Methodist in Farmersville. I've been uh, in the North Texas Conference since 1991. I have um, served churches in every district, including the old district arrangements and the current arrangements. And I uh, have an online ministry, uh, Grace Incarnate Ministries at RevNeal.org, where I've been supplying audio sermons since 1999 and video sermons since 2010. You can find my video sermons on YouTube, and I link them frequently to Facebook. Uh, I've been doing online ministry now, therefore, for you know, 20 years, and it's uh, something that I find very um, uh, helpful to my ministry in my local church as well as beyond. So that's me. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, Manya, can you introduce yourself for us? Hello, my name is Manya Logan. I serve at St. Luke Community United Methodist Church, and I've been there since 1991. Uh, I serve as the Minister of Worship and Arts. Um, we basically use Facebook Live and live stream. So we first started with Facebook Live and then we um, added live stream. And that's um, how we're doing our worship experiences um, right now. Excellent, thank you so much. And Andrew, are you on? Yes, good afternoon everybody. Excellent. Yeah, thank you for having me. My name is Andrew Forrest. I'm the pastor at Munger Place Church, which is in Old East Dallas. And uh, like you, I'm trying to figure this out. And so what little I have to share you is worth the cost of admissions today, and I'm happy to do so. Awesome. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Good. Um, well, Greg, let's, let's start with you. Um, from what I understand, you've been doing some online uh, church stuff for quite some time and have quite a following. You do a lot of pre-recorded using multiple cameras and editing it before you put it on. So um, take 10 or 15 minutes and just share with us what you're doing, equipment you're using, anything that might be helpful or useful to the folks on the call. Certainly. Well, I began um, doing just audio back in 1999, started doing audio, and that was about all that the internet could handle at that time. 
using real player format for it. Uh, I tried doing stop action video where you take photographs throughout the service and send those up. I did a few of those in the early 2000s, but I went to video about the middle part of that decade and periodically produced uh, video sermons using a camera, which I would then load in onto the computer and edit. Um, then in about 2010 with YouTube, I decided to start going on uh, regular videos on YouTube with uh, using multiple cameras. At first it was two cameras, then three, now four. Uh, this is the kind of camera that I use. It's a Canon. This is actually a very old, cam old camera, a very old one. Um, I, don't, I don't think you can even get this one anymore. They got much better cameras than this uh, out there. And I have four of them. I have four of them. And I purchased them over a period of time. They're HD quality cameras. I record the video sermon onto an internal card in each camera. And I set them up in various positions uh, from the balcony in my sanctuary. And then I record the entire service. And um, I also do an audio recording through the church's sound system. And then I download all of the videos into, uh, I use iMovie, but you could use Final Cut Pro if you prefer. I download all the videos, just cut, just get the sermon out of each one of them from the four different angles. I match up the audio feed from the good quality audio feed from the church's sound system to the video, so it's matched perfectly. I then, post-production wise, just cut back and forth between the cameras so that you get a more uh, professional feel with multiple cameras. And I cut back and forth throughout the duration of the sermon. So if I, I like to move a lot when I preach, so when I move to stage left or stage right, I go to the camera that's focused for those areas. I use um, something called the Ken Burns effect in iMovie to do you know, digital shifting around and cropping uh, while I preach, but um, it's a post-production uh, effort more than anything else. The cameras are easy to set up. I have a staff person that does that for me on Sundays, so I don't have to worry about that. They set it up, they start it up, they shut it down, they back them away. I take the cards home, I download them to my laptop and go with it. Uh, Post-production of a sermon can take uh, about three hours total from download to production and upload to YouTube. Um, I do this so that the quality of the video is excellent, the sound of the video is excellent, and you do cutting back and forth between cameras to help keep people's attention because people's attention can very, be very fickle. And, and so if you don't if you keep the same static image for more than a couple of minutes, people will tune out very quickly. So if you are shifting around, you're providing post-production input from whatever you're displaying on the screen, uh, that kind of stuff that also helps too. And I often do that as well. Now you don't have to use four cameras. You could have two cameras. Uh, you could have two people with iPhones or Androids and you set them up and you put them on a mount and you can do it that way. Uh, I have a couple of friends who do that kind of thing with a couple of cameras positioned in a couple of places in their sanctuary and then they take the production of it, they download it and then they edit it together. Um, you, in the end you only get one video stream of the entire thing using the different camera angles. Uh, it's best to try to keep the camera quality the same between them or it becomes very obvious. That's why I have four of the same kind of camera. But, uh, you know, a couple or three iPhones would do the trick as well. Um, this is not for live streaming. This is for delayed or on-demand viewing. Uh, some of my sermon videos have had 20 th plus thousand views. Uh, if you get one, uh, somebody gets some interested in something that you said, it gets shared out a lot on Facebook. It gets shared out a lot on, in various discussion groups all over the world. And you can pick up a lot of views that way, at least I have. Uh, on average, I'll get uh, about 30 views a, a week, and now it's been a lot more because of the um, uh, people being sequestered, uh, but uh, that's to be expected. Um, I have about 3,000, uh, I think it's, it's 3,000, maybe 2,000, I forget how many it is now, uh, subscribers on YouTube, but that's over 10 years of collecting uh, people who subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Um, uh, I uh, produce the video. I have opening credits and end credits. The sermon is just the sermon. I don't know anything else from the service, mostly due to copyright issues. Uh, I own the music that I use at the beginning and the end. It was produced for me by a friend who wrote it and performed it. And um, I prepare credits for the beginning and the end to help its professional quality as well as information. And uh, I upload it every week. I try to have it up every week uh, by Wednesday if I can, although I sometimes get behind. 
Um, but that's my objective. That's what I do. That's what I've been doing now for over 10 years. It works for me. Um, sometimes I do little video clips, short, you know, two minute segments that I'll share up on, on uh, YouTube um, as well as on Facebook. Uh, so I'll do that as well. Um, but uh, I just, most, most people I talk with prefer to have that whole sermon. They can watch whatever portions of it they want. So that's what my video sermons have been doing uh, online the last 10 or so years. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of an involved process at first, but once you get it down, it's easy. Uh, if you have only one or two, if you have only a couple of cameras, it makes it simpler to do. It doesn't take that much time. Um, I do recommend that you try to use at least two because that gives you two different cameras you can move back and forth between and that helps. And again, you can just simply use a phone's camera. That's not that difficult to do either. So if you have any questions for me, I'm always happy to help uh, explain uh, what I do, how I do, the way I do it. Uh, and um, if you have any recommendations for me and how I do it, I'd also appreciate that as well, because I'm always learning new ways to do it. This uh, current situation with uh, live streaming has always been a challenge for me, but we're slowly and surely getting better at that as well. And I'm still doing both of those now. So anyway, that's uh, what I, that's what I'm doing. So. Thanks. That's really helpful. Do you, um, so you're currently, because you don't have a public worship gathering, are you doing, you said you are doing a live stream. Are you using Facebook or YouTube for that? We're, we're using live stream on Facebook right now, Facebook live okay. right now for our live streaming. We may go over to just using uh, YouTube for that. I'm not sure. Uh, sometimes Facebook can be a little uh, twitchy uh, and I've used a uh, YouTube for live streaming as well for other things and I found it wasn't too much trouble uh, so I'm, I'm doing a live stream broadcast uh, this past Sunday we had six people in the sanctuary that's probably all we'll have this coming Sunday too uh, a couple of music folk and we just live stream the whole thing from a centrally located camera and then I still have my four cameras set up and recording the service and I uploaded the sermon uh, Sunday night so uh, that's what I'm doing right now during this emergency. And I also do a live stream Bible study on Tuesdays. Okay, cool. Very cool. Awesome. Um, Manya, I want to, I want to shift to you and um, you're, you're working with St. Luke and uh, you have a bit more of a, a team approach when you're producing your live worship experience. And you guys have been doing that for a while. Can you tell us about, um, how you've done this and, and how that sort of practically worked out in, in, in a time of social distancing and, and less people, how many people do you have on your team and how are you sort of navigating all of that during this time? Uh, yes. So with our team approach, we have, we had maybe three pastors present. Uh, the first Sunday I had a team before they reduced the number of people in the sanctuary. I had a team of about 10 singers. Uh, then we have four to five people for the media team, and I had four musicians, but those were the only people in the sanctuary, so there was no congregation. And so basically, our congregation was our online um, team, well, our online um, congregation. And so for us, um, we used the TriCaster, and so we have two cameras. Also, uh, and then the audio goes into our TriCaster, and then the TriCaster sends it out to live stream and also to the Facebook Live. Uh, we also had a pastor on the live stream as the online pastor, so she was interacting with the people who were watching the live stream. And then we had a lay person who was on the Facebook Live interacting with the people who were watching it uh, on Facebook. Um, for, uh, let me just say, um, of course, when we usually live stream, we do Facebook live, we are accustomed to having persons in the congregation. And so they are always usually, uh, responding or giving us energy. So for the past two Sundays, we have had to bring more energy and bring more life for those persons who are watching us. And so, but I think we've done well with it because we are aware of that. Um, and so that basically is the way we have done it. And we plan our worship. Uh, actually, we had worship planning today. Um, so how we're going to continue. And so each Sunday, we are reducing the number of persons 
that are even actually going to be on the team in the sanctuary. So. So yeah, can you speak a little bit more to the um, the energy, uh, how how you're how you're sort of trying to create that and develop that in in sort of this strange where you don't have people there feeding it. So how are you how are you encouraging your folks to bring that energy? Uh, well, with the musicians, uh, I just uh, encourage them to play with a little more energy, even with the singers to sing with more energy. But if we think about the goodness of God, uh, basically, we don't need to have an audience. So I also said to them, our audience, we have an audience of one, and that one is God. And so right there, that gives us all the energy that we need. Yeah, that's really good. And so um, right now you're, you're looking at, what did you say your size of your team that, that's producing this right now? Uh, when we started out, we may have had about 15, 18, so we got to come down to under 10 now. So okay. that means we'll reduce the number of singers, the number of musicians, uh, the number of pastors, uh, and the number of people in the media team to okay. get us right under 10. And, and you're still doing that though from the sanctuary? Yes, and we'll, yes. Sunday would be the first time when we do it with under 10. Yes, from the sanctuary, yes. And then all of your sound, uh, like your sound technicians, your sound all comes through. Is it, is it right through your camera or is it coming through? Are you, is your camera plugged into your sound system? No, the TriCaster is the, uh, there's an audio feed from our audio board that goes to our TriCaster. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Excellent. Well, Andrew, um, can you uh, uh, share with us? I Owen was telling me a little bit that you're uh, you're you're new to all of this, and when you found out you were going to have to do live stream, you you kind of went and got the stuff and are figuring out as you go. So sh share with us a little bit about that experience and and what you all are doing and how it's working. Yeah, absolutely. Again, I'm Andrew. I'm at Monkey Place Church in Old East Dallas. And I'll just say off the bat that just like you, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm trying to figure it out. And so I want to encourage us to, you know, none of us were trained for this. Some of us are real smart, like Manya and Greg. The rest of us are just playing catch up. So we're doing our best. So I want to give you permission to say we're figuring it out. It's not going to be perfect right now. Okay, if you go to my website right now, andrewforrest.org, F-O-R-R-E-S-T.org, there's a handout there if you wanted to see that. Uh, I can also share it over Zoom if you need it, but I thought you can download the handout from my blog, but also the actual handout is then printed on the blog beyond, below that. I think there's a post there that's called uh, uh, Pastor's Webinar, Webinar, something like that. So if you see that, give me a thumbs up if you all see that, if you like, but I can just work through some of those details now. Okay, Greg sees it there. Great. Okay, this is just some simple, simple thoughts. So the overview is, um, we made the decision to go ahead and not do broadcasts from church uh, for several reasons. Uh, one is, and I, I can't stress this enough, I decided that for somebody like me who doesn't have these skills, a simplicity is the key. I wanted to have a medium that I knew we could make work over time. I also, frankly, sort of anticipated that we'd have this um, uh, more restrictive quarantine. And so for all those reasons, even two Sundays ago, I just did it home from my house. So very, very literally, our worship director actually is at her house and she has a beautiful piano. She actually plays for about a half hour, ends the feed, and then I start a new feed. Not the most elegant way to do it, but that's how we're doing it. Okay, so I'm in, my, I'm in the same place I'm going now. I use a different thing. I'm talking into my computer right now and I'm sitting down. Um, I actually use my phone on Sundays using Facebook Live. Facebook Live is not perfect, but it is free and a lot of folks know how to use it. So our folks interact with our live stream in two ways. Number one, they can, if they belong to Facebook, if they have a Facebook account, they can watch it you know, as a live video on Facebook. We've also learned how to embed that code on our website. So folks can also work, watch on our website for those who don't have Facebook for whatever reason. I, um, I did buy, went out and buy, bought a bunch of stuff on Amazon about a month ago, just thinking that we might be in this situation. So I use this thing here, it's a little tripod, and your phone sits in the tripod like that. And this thing plugs into the lightning jack on your phone. So I have an iPhone XS, something like that. Okay. Um, uh, I, <laughs> the first week I was sitting down, uh, 
last week and for other things I've been doing, I've actually put a ladder on my desk. And then like the third step up of the ladder, I put this, which is about eye level with my thing. And so I stand. I figured standing was just a little bit more natural uh, doing it like that. On, the web, on my website and on the handout, I linked the links to the lighting. So I also have two big lights over here, like you see it like a photo shoot. It was about 150 bucks for both of them. Um, and I use those on Sundays as well. The last couple of weeks, I've literally um, printed out, because this thing is so, uh, it's not produced, I've actually printed out a couple of key slides that like I hold up, like I had one word on it, and I just held it up in front of the camera for the point of my sermon, like a, a key word like that. Um, uh, okay, on my hand that I talk about, I, I do think I would pick whatever you feel comfortable with. We, this thing for me is super stressful. And so I'm trying to simplify it as much as possible to do the easiest thing for me that just works. Our levels are not highly produced. It's not like television, but for me, it's just what I can pull off and, and what our team can do. Uh, I, I made the decision to go from home too, because for me, I decided the intimacy of being this close uh, on Facebook Live might trump our lack of uh, production excellence elsewhere which is also why I decided to go live. Live is a lot more complicated because you can't produce it well. You can, you know, it just doesn't look as good. And if you screw up, it's screwed up. But there's just something about um, using Facebook Live particularly. I can greet people by name. You'll see if you go live, their little names scroll up. And so I'll say, you know, hey guys, hey Greg, hey Manya, hey Matt, so glad to have you guys this morning. You know, I kind of do that at the beginning. And I think that is still worth something. I can't do that all along because obviously once we start going, I'm looking at the camera, not looking down at the screen, but I found that helpful. So this is again, Facebook live. There's other, a lot more sophisticated ways to broadcast live, but that's what we're, we're doing right off my phone. I just do it right there. Um, so that's why we decided to go live like that. There's pluses and minuses. I would say you, you decide what your trade-off is and then you just do what you feel most comfortable with. Again, excellence is less important than clarity and consistency. And I think the intimacy. Um, one t tip I would give is rehearse everything, rehearse everything, rehearse everything, rehearse everything. I'm a big believer in that on general worship on Sundays, but certainly now. Can I give you a small example how I didn't follow this? So the first week I had us doing the Apostles' Creed. You know, people are at home in their PJs and their back porch, wherever they are. And I said, okay, let's stand to say the Apostles' Creed. So the first week we did worship, I was sitting for it. So I stood which meant the rest of the time my torso was in the camera, which I knew would be the case. But because I hadn't practiced standing, I slid my chair out, which grabbed the extension cord from my two lights, which fell on me. Okay. I didn't practice it. So that was another lesson. Practice everything. I mean, every gesture, every move you're going to do differently. Also, there's just so many problems. Can you hear? Can you not hear? Am I coming through? Our worship director has been playing the piano and Something about where she holds her phone on the tripod will cover the little mic on the iPhone. So we're telling her, it's muffled, it's muffled. You just want to kind of practice it and then you do the same thing, which is why I would suggest getting a home studio set up, studio, right? Where you always do it in the exact same place so that you're not having to recreate it all the time. These two stupid big lights I have here are just now around my desk and that's how they're going to be. Um, and then the last thing I'd say is that I think small improvements make a big difference. So anything you can do to just to raise the production quality a little bit will be good. So some suggestions I have there is lighting. Whenever you've seen um, the full scene of like a network TV reporter broadcasting, they always have those big bright lights shining down at them, even though they're outside and it doesn't look like they need it. So I think lighting is important. However you can sit so your face is well lit, I think is important. You could buy lights, you could turn a lamp around, sit where the sun comes on you, adjust the blinds, something like that. I think sound is important. And so I've decided that using some form of a microphone, I have uh, this thing again that plugs into my phone. I also have some lavalier mics that plug into the phone. This thing was relatively expensive. The whole kit was about 250 bucks. The lavalier mics are about $15. So pick what you use. Um, um, so one more point I had to make. Anyway, I, I think those small little details may just help a lot and it's not going to be perfect, but your people, our people are not asking us for perfection. They're just asking for um, connection with us right now. And so that's what we've decided to do. I'll go ahead and mute myself there unless you have more questions, Matt. No, that's really helpful. I, I'm wondering, so you say rehearse everything. Do you, um, 
do you like do a sort of a dry run and, and put it all, you know, get, get on Facebook with your team on a Friday afternoon and like, we're going to do a dry run here and see how it goes. Yeah. So um, certainly the first weekend, what we scheduled a couple of live things and said, Hey guys, we're going live on Facebook at 5 PM. It's, we're going to try to figure this out. So help us out, you know, be kind to us. And the 150 people who were ready, who are on Facebook got on right away. You know, I didn't send it to the whole church, but whoever was on, uh, like that. And that was really helpful about somebody said, you're too close. You're too far away. The, the lighting is messed up. So that's what I mean. One last point, as far as a handout, um, we, we we're posting them online, just simple documents. Most people I assume have more than one device that can access the internet in these days. And many people have a home office they can print from, but at least the words are up like that. You know, the apostles creed, the prayer, that kind of thing. So yes, sir. That's really good. That's really good. That's helpful. Um, Do you mind turning your camera and let us see those lights? Yeah, I will. I'll pick up the thing here. Um, I'll also post a picture on my blog. So uh, I'm plugged in here. So there's one like that. And there's another like that. And I'm looking out a window. And online on my blog post, if you scroll down, there's a picture that I took from last weekend uh, about it. Another thing about rehearsal example is super hot. The, the air conditioning doesn't work in this room of the house anyway. I get uh, nervous when I'm doing the live worship thing and these lights are warm. So I had to learn like to kind of cool myself down ahead of time, you know, have a towel for my, my TD Jakes towel type thing. So just prepare for that kind of thing too. That's good, that's good. Well, um, Reverend Masters, would you like to lead some of our, our uh, question and response time? And um, we can let people, if, if you want, if you have questions, uh, if you have questions for any of our presenters, um, if you want to just specify in the uh, chat room who your question's for, and then um, if you just have a general question, you want to sort of crowdsource to the group that's here now, there's about 100 folks in here, so there's, there's plenty of uh, with collective wisdom that we can draw off of. So let's just, you know, we just want to open it up and we'll be here as long as we need to, to, to let some conversation go and, and everyone can get their questions answered. So Estee I'm handing it off to you, but you're on mute, just so you know. Um, so Matt, I'm gonna uh, just uh, interject just, just a second. Um, there are uh, presenters, if you have noticed, there's a few questions in the chat area. If you guys just go in there and um, there's a couple of questions about the stuff that you're using, just go in and, and type in um, so they asked Andrew uh, what type of mic uh, you're using. You could just type in there that information. Thanks, okay. Hannah. So before we go to the questions, we have one more person that's going to speak. Nucleus is a pastor at St. Paul. And what they did from the first Sunday that we were in quarantine to the second Sunday was vastly different. And so as Andrew talked about, we're all learning this. And so we want to have Nucleus give a chance to make a presentation um, about what they did at St. Paul. So Nucleus, you're on. Nuke? All right, thank you. Thank, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, well, we, we, um, uh, we didn't, we, we put on our first um, service and like like many of um, everybody in here, uh, we didn't know uh, what that was going to look like, and so uh, one of the things that that we were able to do after after viewing that and just kind of working through it and trying to figure it out was to sit down and look at what we produced, and then after looking at what we produced uh, and we were able to nitpick. And go through it, and, and you see all of the um, what we what I, what I would consider mistakes or things that weren't great for uh, production and trying to appeal to an audience online. Uh, one of the things that I, I think that we're we're heading toward is not just appealing to um, our our, um, our our members uh, of the of the church, but there are a whole group of people. Uh, who are sitting at home now with nothing to do, and uh, they're they're scrolling online as well. So we want to try to to um, appeal to to them. And so, uh, just like Doctor Doctor Greg uh, Neal, um, we we've kind of taken the same approach 
uh, what happened. We, we've kind of taken the same approach uh, as to how we uh, conduct our services and we're shooting off of um, three or four different cameras. Uh, we're using a uh, software called Switcher uh, that gives different angles for, uh, for the videos. And, uh, and, and then it, it's important to make sure, like Dr. Dr. Neil said, it's important to make sure that those angles are all of the same uh, quality because then you have a, uh, you, you don't want to go from a fuzzy shot to a very clear shot uh, uh, because, you know, people will, people will talk about that. And, um, you know, I, I've, I've had the opportunity and pleasure to sit with some folk um, as they nitpick at our video. <laughs> so um we we want to make sure that we are are producing a uh, a great product so um and just like uh andrew um just like andrew we we have some um lighting that we that we purchased to make sure that we're we're lighting up the the uh, the area uh right and so what we do is we record we record our services. We have um, a team of of people come in, and uh, we we got people on cameras. We've got our praise team uh, setting up. We've got our our sound techs uh, making sure the sound is is correct. And then um, after we after we shoot everything, um, after after we shoot the recording, pastors got to come in. And 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 one of the things we're trying to do is get ahead of this thing. Uh, so pastors coming in with two or three sermons already <laughs> locked and loaded, ready to go, and uh, and, and we're we're recording him in in those, and, and it takes quite a it takes quite a bit of time, but we're we're recording him and shooting those uh, those messages, and then once everything is is completed, uh, from the praise team to uh, uh, pastor to our our post. Um, uh, to our, our beginning message as we're, we're talking to to uh, the audience before it before everything goes off and then after um, pastor's message uh, once we get all of that together uh, we we take those files and we we load them into Final Cut Pro and and then we begin to edit and and splice things together cut it. Uh, and and form a a product. One of the things that I did too, as well, was I went and I watched uh, a lot of people who have already been doing this. Uh, uh, a lot of people who have already been doing this. So, uh, like, uh, I, I looked at the. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, Dr. Jamal Bryan and New Birth uh, in at in Atlanta. Um, or uh, R.A. Vernon in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, just, just looking at different, uh, I have some friends who do live streams and, and all of that. So I looked at what they, what they do and then made sure that I was able to replicate in some way um, what, I, what I witnessed from them that looked like pretty good, pretty good um, products. And so uh, and, and then we, we try to keep it. We try to keep it switched up so that we're not just uh, in in one place uh, when we're recording. Uh, we will we will change it up and and change backgrounds and scenery. So uh, one the, the praise team is singing on the stage. Another time the praise team is singing in our welcome center. Another time the praise team is in a in a more intimate space at the uh, in pastor's office singing. Uh, with pastor at his desk, helping out, uh, uh, getting his Luther on. And so that, that, those are some things that we're trying to, that we're trying to uh, do. So we have the, the intimate settings. We have the, um, the, the setting where, where pastor is in the sanctuary. Uh, we, have the, we have the setting where pastor is in the, uh, or they're in the welcome center. And so th those are just, just trying to figure it out, doing so many different things to, uh, uh, to, to navigate through this, uh, this new, I guess, this new norm. And I think that's, that's pretty much what we are, what we're doing.
you, you're on mute. You're on mute. Uh, people that are at home that are um, looking at you, you know, or looking at uh, Manya with at St. Luke or some of the other churches. Uh, what we're finding is they're not just looking at one church. With people being online, you can look at multiple things. And one of the things that St. Paul did that was helpful for me, because I do look at different ones, is um, when that last Sunday sermon, I mean, worship service was dropped, uh, when I signed on to St. Paul, it said worship was beginning or connecting to worship. It I didn't have to stay there. I got a notification when you were starting, and it just... I could tell it wasn't live. Uh, I couldn't really tell for sure, though. I couldn't tell if it was recorded. It was really a, a pretty um, polished presentation. But how did you put that on? And did you put it on your website so that when people joined you, they knew that it was going to be started? They didn't have to go through Facebook Live and try to find you. They just went to your web page and you had the little prompt there to say when they were going to start. That was new from the, the uh, Sunday before. Can you speak to that a little bit? Um, yeah, well, we, we've got a whole uh, team that kind of that kind of works that. And uh, what they do is they, they, they embedded that on our onto our website um, so that you could view it from our website. And also with it being a YouTube, uh, our, our YouTube channel, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you're going to get the notification um, that we are uh, that we have a new video uh, coming up that is about to premiere. Uh, YouTube allows you to schedule uh, that premiere um, where it will it will lock the video once you upload the video to YouTube. It will lock the video um, and it won't play until uh, that until the time that you that you put in uh, so that and, and, and then and then it provides a uh, a countdown and if you are if you are subscribed to it you're going to get that notification that is going to that is getting ready to start okay thank you that was that was helpful that leads me thanks nucleus that leads me to our first question i know that as pastors aesthetics is so important whether you, if you're at home uh, doing your online worship, you're, you're careful about what you have in the background, what people see and, and don't see. You want your welcome, your worship space to be a space that's welcome, where people feel safe. They feel like it's a holy space. And so um, we're going to just open it up for people to talk about how do you set that space for, for people who show up early, for people who are just there? How do you, you set your space for worship on a Sunday morning? Any of our speakers could um, speak to that, but also it's open to all of you that are there. So say a little bit about how you do aesthetics, because I know that's important to all of us. So feel free to unmute. Yeah, I'll speak to that very quickly. Uh, you see behind me, it's, it looks a little bit neater on a Sunday and the lighting's a little bit different. My camera is a little higher, but somebody from church said you need more color and brought that plant over my shoulder last week and somebody else donated the painting on the wall to bring it out so uh i just decided to keep a nice neat clean room with very limited distractions and then we've added a few little bits of color from there so like the, even these pillows over here on the couch i take out on sundays it's very very simple and you can go online and see it i just thought simplicity is what i what i could best do at this point simplicity thanks andrew okay so what about some of the others how do you do what how do you make sure that people feel safe in that the place is holy. What about aesthetics? Okay, what we did, uh, we- any of our have, speakers, any of the speaker want to talk to any of the- okay. This is Manya, can you hear me? Hello, this is Manya, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, uh, what we did, we have um, banners that actually outline the Lord's Prayer. And so we brought those banners into the sanctuary and actually placed them in the choir loft. So it became the backdrop for um, the, um, the aesthetics as opposed to listen, looking at an empty choir loft. And so, so now what they see, they actually see the Lord's Prayer. And um, so that was our back, 
backdrop for that. Also for the beginning, the 15 minutes this past Sunday, we actually just scrolled all of our ministry highlights and information that our um, congregants and anyone who was watching uh, could use that information to access us. It talked about uh, the information that came from the mayor's office. It talked about uh, just how to protect yourself during this time. Um, that's what we did. At uh, Farmersville, we broadcasted from the sanctuary uh, like, like we would normally do in a regular worship service. So we decided to pare down the service to slightly simpler format. Um, <clears throat> we had music, uh, play, a pianist played. We played traditional, very old style traditional hymns that the congregation would know, uh, may not be able to sing to them because they may not have a hymnal, but they would know the songs. And so we were very careful about the hymns that we chose. Uh, we went ahead and invested because we felt that that would help to, to try to reduce the difference feeling because we, we do wear vestments in the traditional service at Farmersville. So we did that. Uh, I and my youth pastor alternated functions in the service so that it wasn't just the same head up there speaking and our choir director uh, and a member of the choir uh, who's his wife, they did most of the music singing and so that really worked and we kept the chancel area was pretty much what was there for the live stream broadcast. Um, that was pretty much what we did. It was a very simple, straightforward service. We did not have an affirmation of faith. We did have the Lord's Prayer. Um, we're pretty much going to do the same thing this coming Sunday. Um, what's up for grabs is what we're going to do for Palm Sunday and of course Easter. Uh, we and we'll talk about that possibly a little later on, but that's what we did. I'll offer something if I may. Yeah, so from a very low tech standpoint, um, what I tried to create was a sense of intimacy. Uh, it was just myself the first Sunday we tried this. So this was uh, sitting close to the altar and having those worship elements and some stained glass in there, trying to frame that in a way that would be familiar uh, and intimate. And then this past Sunday, we invited our, uh, a couple of musicians uh, to be there, but they weren't comfortable being on camera. So I moved the camera a little further back, and, and I think at the last minute, it flipped on its side. That's what Facebook Live is all about. But um, one of the things I've done as well is to include an order of worship. Um, so I will post that there. Uh, and, and seek to, to uh, give that and get going with the traditional hymns and having the words there printed so that if someone was able to pull that up uh, at a time, uh, I think that would be helpful. Okay. All right. Thank you. So um, let me move on to another question. Whether you're doing worship online or in person, we're going to have unexpected, unprepared for challenges. So for those of us who are new to this, can you give us a heads up? on uh, as to what some of those might be. For those of you that are really in this, give us a heads up. What, what can we expect of some of those uh, unexpected, unprepared for challenges? I really like the way Andrew said, practice, practice, practice. I think that's, that's very important. Yeah, uh, can, can I speak to that? I have one absolutely. thought. Yeah. I, I think you need to expect um, people texting you or whatever uh, saying it's frozen, it's messed up, it's gone down, something like that. And of course, if you're like me, it may, you just want to pull your hair out at that moment, mm -hmm. but you can't. And so um, again, we're doing Facebook live and then embedding that code on our website. And it takes, there's a slight delay for that to happen, but be that as it may, what I've started to do. So last week I knew I was going to be talking at the camera for like five minutes before, like we were ready to begin. So the first week I had to just kind of wing it like Stephen Colbert going out to the audience before the, the late show things. Last week, I brought a little bit of material with me to talk about some books my family had been reading or something like that. So I think my advice would be to prepare for there to be some kind of problem and to decide if the problem is such that you're going to just filibuster for a little bit right there and talk to people. Or if you're just going to press on knowing there's nothing you can do about it at that moment and life will go on. I would definitely expect a technical glitch no matter how much you rehearse, for sure. Okay, all right. Yeah, if I could, if I could also um, weigh in on the uh, unexpected things. Hi, my, I'm Charles. I uh, I worship with Oasis Global Missions. Um, especially with Facebook Live, what I noticed is that it's it's very good to try to get a designated phone. Um, I know it's good 
to use a phone, but then not to use your cell phone, but to use maybe say a different um, uh, a different device. Uh, just to use a different device other than your phone. So maybe an old phone that you that you haven't used in a while or something like that. Just to use that because then that way you only you only worry about just Wi-Fi. You know, just connecting connecting to uh to the Wi-Fi, um, connecting to Facebook via Wi-Fi. So this way, when you're doing it during the worship, things like phone calls and text messages and all that would not interrupt it because. It's not connected to like a, a phone number, you know. It's it's it, it'll just be a designated phone that is solely dedicated to having the the the, the live streaming during that time, okay. and then and then also just make sure make sure to check your Wi-Fi to to to, to see that you have good Wi-Fi strength. Because um, from experience, I've noticed that you know during the during the videoing, it'll start to blare out a lot when the when the signal is very weak and then you know that obviously would get viewers frustrated because then they can't see you very well or you know um you know it's like they would see a static image but then the voice is still going on or vice versa or things like that okay yeah. one quick other fault sorry that just pinged me about something i actually commandeered my wife's phone as a backup video recorder so i'm streaming from my phone uh, my my family's downstairs i'm upstairs and i just straight up record on her phone and the off chance that everything screws up on my phone, at least I've done, I have a recording that I can put up later. Um, okay. so, so again, kind of redundancy building it in, I found is helpful. And yeah, I like the idea. I turn it off, put on airplane mode, put on do not disturb and all that. But once or twice, I've also even forgotten, of course. Okay. Any other um, challenges that you have, ex that you have experienced that we might um, expect to experience? Yeah, I would say, um make sure you give yourself if you're if you're recording your service and you got to upload it make sure you give yourself uh uh ample uh upload time because um anything that can go wrong will go wrong <laughs> when trying to upload a video whether that be uh your your internet starts moving slow and uh, uh something like that and you don't want to have to have to have to have this going or have your your members expecting a certain time to see it mm -hmm. and it hadn't uploaded yet so give yourself enough time um at least upload it a day get it uploaded before uh you think you need to have it uploaded uh because like i said it there are so many different variables that could take place that youtube may even have a, a issue or a challenge and then you've got to try to figure that out so Okay. That would be one of my suggestions. Thank you. I'm in real quick. Yes. So my name is Nigel. I'm at First United Methodist Church in Plano. <clears throat> we don't typically, or we hadn't typically live streamed our service, but of course, with everything that's going on, everybody's having to come up with stuff on the fly. So the first couple of weeks, and we'll change this in the future, but the first couple of weeks, what we did is uh, we used an iPad and we streamed to Vimeo. And there is a streaming cost, which is, I believe, $75 a month, but that also gives you like seven terabytes a month worth of storage space. So you can upload I mean, full services on a regular basis to Vimeo. So you have that recorded and you also have that um, kind of in storage. You have that in queue so people can go ahead and watch. Um, one thing that I had noticed is the audio quality uh, the first time that we did it, the first week that we did it, uh, was very harsh. I mean, it, it was a feed that came directly from the soundboard, and we've got a very nice soundboard, came directly from the soundboard into, and you can purchase these anywhere, but it's an iRig that converts an XLR feed, and for sound people, you know what that is, an XLR feed to plug it straight into your iPad. So that's what we did the first week. And the second week, we immediately changed it. What we did is we used that same XLR feed, but one of the channels on our soundboard, we call a room microphone. So what we did is we took a microphone and placed it about halfway back in our sanctuary. And essentially what you're doing is you're capturing the audio that's coming from the speakers in your sanctuary. And you would think, why would you do something like that? Well, 
you start to lack the ambiance and the reverb and the atmosphere of your sanctuary. So whenever we added that room microphone about halfway back, what it did is it captured more sound, of course. It also smoothed out the vocals. It smoothed out the instruments. And we have about five people on our, on our contemporary worship team, you know, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, bass guitar, drums, and it smoothed all of that out. So it didn't sound so harsh whenever you're listening to it online. And that upgraded our quality like crazy. So we still use the soundboard feed that's going from an XLR cable out to the iRig that you can purchase at Guitar Center or Walmart, and that feeds directly into the iPad. And we also, on our soundboard, dedicated a channel for a room microphone that we place halfway back in our sanctuary to capture the ambiance and the atmosphere. Of course, that's not gonna work 100% uh, for Andrew Forrest. If you're doing everything from home and more power to you, praise God for what you're doing. Um, but you can still, in, in a little bit, of, in a small sense, and do that same thing even at home. But it works very well if you're trying to capture a worship team uh, in your sanctuary where nobody's at anyways. That's all I got. All right, thanks, thanks for sharing. So I noticed it, one of the questions is about having a license. Greg spoke a little bit about that earlier. Um, so when we're doing worship online, can someone talk a little bit about what license we may need to have or use for what we're doing? Uh, can I, I think I might be able to speak to this just a little bit. Absolutely. If, um, so there's uh, there's different kinds of licenses. There's software licenses, and then what Greg referenced was copyright uh, and copyright licenses. Um, if you if you look at the fine print in any of our hymnals uh, or books of worship, uh, it says that none of this is to be captured or rebroadcast in any way, and that's kind of a standard thing that gets put in uh, in those books as they get published. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there's what things say, and then there's how things operate. And so um, uh, what has been the accepted standard, and I've even received an email from um, Nashville when I was asking them about this very question, is if you are streaming a worship service, they consider it to be the same as in the room. And so they allow that as an exception uh, for for your um, uh, copyright issues. So you can stream a worship service. Um, you can use uh, the hymnal. You can use anything that you would normally use on a Sunday morning, uh, and you can broadcast that um, a, as a worship service and not have to worry about the copyright of it. Good, good information. Thank you so much for sharing. It's my pleasure. Uh -huh. So um, I have a question, if I may, if I may ask a question about the licensing sure yeah um i i was told of something called um uh, ccli um and this is more in terms of the kind of music that we that we we play during the service and in this case I'll, I'll, i'm speaking more in terms of a contemporary service um i was told we, we, there's there's a need to get a ccli um but then there's a difference in if and if maybe say you, one's church is an uh, an uh, an affiliate of another, then it could qualify as under as, as using it the parent the, the the CCLI for the parents one. Um, but I'm still not sure as to how whether we're supposed to get a CCLI or whether it's a parent church that we can use the CCLI for and all that. And then secondly, also I get this a bit of an offshoot, but then with um, Broadcasting on you on YouTube live live uh, YouTube live. Uh, I I got this notification saying that you can only use it. You can only start using it when you have a thousand followers and more. I'm I'm not so sure as to how true that is. Um, that's just the notification that I got from trying to set it up. But if someone also knows more about that and can educate me, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Charles. Uh, um, uh, so the YouTube thing, streaming with a thousand people, uh, you have to have a thousand subscribers. That's one of their newer things that they've put in to try and um, cut down on some uh, other instances of copyright uh, issue. Um, 
it mostly has to do with streaming from your phone. Um, you can uh, do uh, streaming through your computer to YouTube with less than a thousand uh, in most cases, but it, in part, it also depends on the age of your YouTube account. Um, you, a YouTube account that was created yesterday is going to have different rules than a YouTube account that was created three years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. They're going to have different rules associated with them. Um, and, uh, and how do you know? Well, when was your Google account created? Uh, if you use Gmail, um, that'll probably be the date that they use. The first time you watched videos while signed in on YouTube, that's going to be the age of your account. And, and so I hope that answers it. As far as uh, contemporary music and having a, a CCLI license, uh, I recommend each church having one of those. If you're a separate campus uh, of a larger church, that's one thing, but each of us are individual churches as part of the North Texas Conference. And so I recommend having a CCLI license uh, per church. Um, I even recommend having a CVLI, CVLI license, uh, which you can get through our conference uh, at a discounted rate, which allows you to use video clips uh, and things from movies as well without, without worrying about a license. Okay. Um, I want to interrupt really, really quickly. I don't mean to jump in, but no, it's okay. as this uh, question uh, was asked, I emailed quickly uh, our, uh, the director of media and our, uh, for the conference, and I asked him if we um, have any type of license for the conference, and uh, his email said yes. The North Texas Conference has purchased basic license on CCLI, and one license through April 15th. Um, and then I asked him what that means exactly. <laughs> and he said, yes, that all of the NTC churches have the basic CCLI and the one license. Um, so it's, it, uh, it sounds to me like we, uh, all of our churches that are in the North Texas Conference are covered under that. Uh, license. He's going to give me more information about exactly what that covers, but I did want you to know that if you are part of the North Texas Conference, it sounds to me that we do have that license for you. Can you back me up on that, Matt? Yep, that's exactly right. Okay. Yeah. So, Maya, did you want to speak to that? Because I know St. Luke talks about licensing uh, with almost everything that you guys do at uh, St. Luke. Do you well, have anything else to add to it? No, but like I said, the North Texas Conference has a license, but we also have our license too. Um, so okay. that's, uh, what I did want to speak to, and I forgot in my presentation, even though we're doing the live stream, there are some people in our congregations who do not have computers or they do not have smartphones. So what we have done is we have a prayer line. And so we ask them to call into their prayer line. And so um, we prefer, so that means we connect with, since we're, we are a multi-generational church. And so those persons who don't have computers or smartphones, what they do is just call into the prayer line. And one of our members is sitting in a room where the audio is going in there and then they just listen from okay. the uh, worship. And then we've had about 30 people to call in and worship with us that way. Okay, thanks. It's good to know. So Yes. So via my understanding and our research, um, we have found that the basic license doesn't cover streaming. We had to purchase a separate streaming license, which is also available on the CCLI website. Um, this, the basic CCLI website, from our understanding and research, only covers live performance. It does not cover streamed performance. Hmm. Okay. Thank you for that information, um, <clears throat> Neil. And I'll um, make sure and ask our representative exactly what that covers. But thank you for letting us know that. Yeah. Nigel, uh, I yeah. I had the same understanding at one point, and when then I contacted Nashville uh, to get uh, clarity and to double check, um, and and they said that that basically means for like somebody sitting down in their living room streaming a performance of something uh, is one thing, but if you're doing a broadcast of a live event, 
then that's a live event and it, it should be covered there. At least that's how it was explained to me. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing worship on Sunday and you're doing live, that's the same as if the congregation was sitting there. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And, and so also let's keep in mind that, that uh, in this particular period of time uh, where our whole society is outside of its norm, I would, I would not worry too much uh, about enforcement of this other than maybe YouTube algorithms, um, which will listen into something if you're streaming to YouTube or Facebook and they think that something's a copyright violation, they'll cut the audio feed uh, from your broadcast. Um, and, and so that's the only thing to be concerned about, but that's like if I'm using my phone to put music through that's, um, um, production quality from a, uh, a recording label that would have it in, uh, Facebook or YouTube's, um, database. If I'm doing a live performance of a song, then that would typically fall under what's considered cover, uh, cover music, which is an artistic license that's separated from uh, the original in a, uh, just enough of a way that it shouldn't be an issue for what we're doing. So don't, don't worry too much about time and energy into copyright uh, in this particular uh, time. And if you're thinking that everything that we've talked about is just overwhelming, uh, just grab yourself a flex tripod, grab your phone and just do it straight from there. It, it, it doesn't have to be this complicated. The more complicated it is, the better the quality and maybe the better retention. Uh, but your people want your authentic selves and they want, they want to worship with you more than anything right now. Um, and so let's, let's, uh, let's try and keep that as our main focus. Okay. But for those of us who uh, are doing it pre-recorded and not live, live, then the copyright does matter, right? In this instance, um, I, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, and it, it, it's, uh, again, I would say that, that, um, because of the particular circumstances that we're in right now, uh, I wouldn't worry about that. But like, um, for example, uh, Dr. Greg used to do a You Now show. Um, it, if he were going to have a, uh, if he were going to be performing CCLI music through that You Now show that he was doing, which was not hit, which, which was not his church's normal Sunday morning worship then he would need the, the uh, broadcast license through CCLI. Uh, but given that this is just an attempt at putting worship on for our people, I'm guessing that it would fall into the live event license, whether it's pre-recorded and then broadcast at that moment uh, or, or done in the room on Sunday morning. Thank you. There's one um, Jacob, I also have a question per the Sorry, may I? Yes. Yeah. And then we're going to move to another question after Thank you. this comment. Okay. Yes. Per the, per the CCLI that we have, um, is it okay to say before service starts, maybe um, just as the, the live feed comes on, playing music in the background, you know, just so that the whole atmosphere is not dark. And in this case, music um, that's you know, the it's a music off of YouTube, which is already used and all that. Um, is that covered? Um, is it okay to no. do, or is that not okay? No. To if you if you were using like a, a YouTube playlist to send that through to your live stream feed, that would not be covered. Understood. Thank you. Okay. So in the midst of um, the season that we're in and doing worship online, some are doing live, some are doing recorded. Um, are any of you engaging with your congregation during that time? I remember Manya said they have a pastor that's kind of on call and, and monitor the comments and would respond to the comments. So they're interacting that way. But how, how are you uh, able to interact with the congregation during this season of doing online? Um, well, on Sunday morning, I had, uh, while my youth associate was up 
uh, doing her portion of the service, which was a, a children's portion and announcements and doing the uh, pastoral prayer, I was on the phone watching the service and interacting with church members directly. Okay. When I was preaching, she was doing that. And so it was kind of a, a tandem operation. That's how we did it, at least. Okay. Okay. And another thing that we did when we do prayers of the people in worship, we allow a space for people to speak their prayers out loud. Okay. And so we encourage them to type the prayer request in the Facebook, in the comments. Okay. Thanks, April. Anybody else? Any, anybody else uh, interacting with your people? So what April said is awesome because what that also does is it, um, it bumps your, your feed like if you're streaming through Facebook, we were actually just talking about this in our worship planning meeting. And I, I encouraged, you know, our worship leaders, our pastors who are on the stage, you know, speaking in front of a camera to encourage people by asking questions that they have to respond to in a comment. This is a great time for the church that we're able to stream. Everyone is, everyone is streaming and we're reaching so far. And the more times people comment on your stream, the more prominent it becomes on Facebook and more readily accessible it is to people who may want to view it. So ask questions, mm -hmm. this is my opinion, ask questions that people have to respond to. A simple question would be like, hey, where are you listening from? Uh, and type it out in a comment on this feed. And that just boosts your streaming post anyways. Okay. So we, oh, uh, yeah. what was it? We, we also did uh, kind of a, our normal joys and concerns time uh, sort of, you know, opened it up for people to type in stuff. And we had some, so we're filming in a, or we're streaming from our, from our sanctuary. And so I, I can't, I'm, if I'm leading that, I can't see Facebook necessarily, but we had our, like our youth director was sitting behind the camera. And so then she would read out what people were saying and then I could sort of respond to her and we could do uh, you know, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer sort of uh, thing that way. And so having another person to kind of uh, even just in live worship to speak out those things and have more people, multiple people sort of voices going on in the sanctuary, if that's where you're doing it, uh, mm -hmm. can really work. And that way you don't have to necessarily be right up yourself against the computer and yourself seeing it. You can, you know, just kind of tag team on that. Okay. Thanks, Nick. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's compare now uh, for those that are recording it and dropping it on Sunday in those that are Facebook Live. If you record it, um, you know, you, you can't really interact with your people then, but is there a way for them to leave comments that you can get back with them at another time? Yes, you can do that. It's very easy to do that. When I uh, post up my videos, they're after the fact, but then you can have a comment stream there. And people okay. can make comments um, uh, if you put it up on YouTube, but they can also do it on, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. If I were to be pre-recording and then dropping it on Sunday morning, that's precisely what I would do. I'd be watching the link on Facebook. I'd be watching uh, the comment stream on YouTube and encouraging people to interact with and ask questions and communicate. And then I would respond back uh, as quickly as I could. Um, the real challenge, of course, is... Um, preaching to an empty sanctuary if you're pre-recording. Mm. That's a real struggle. Mm. There have been a few cases in the past where due to technology issues, I haven't been able to record my Sunday morning sermon or I thought I recorded it and it turned out that it didn't record. Mm. And it's really weird getting in the sanctuary and preaching, uh, <laughs> preaching a sermon to an empty sanctuary. Mm. That takes imagination. Yeah. Uh, imagining them there. I saw on Facebook people taking pictures of church members and putting them on the pews. I thought it was a brilliant idea. Yeah. Um, so that, that's, uh, that's the challenge there is, is to, to preach to an empty sanctuary. It's really tough. But imagination and realizing that it may be empty of other people, but you're not alone. Mm -hmm. The communion of the saints is real and God is there. And that's what I try to remember at least. Yes. But interacting with them on YouTube and on, on Facebook is very easy to do. And they can leave questions and comments at any time and you can reply at any time. Okay. Thanks. I, I remember last Sunday, uh, Michael Bowie uh, at St. Luke was preaching and the, watching the comments, people were, you know, really enjoying the, the message. He was preaching basically to an empty sanctuary except for the praise team, worship leaders, and it is very hard. But once you're going and you have your, your message, then um, people seem to really 
you know if they're being engaged because of the comments. So um, any of you want to speak to that? What is that like to preach to an empty um, sanctuary if you're doing it at the church and you only have those 10 persons that are there? What have been some of your experiences and how, how, do, you, how do you do that? Well, I guess, uh, Reverend Masters, I chime in. Um, as you said, you know, it's been an a interesting time to, to preach to an empty sanctuary, but I told Manya and the team that it's amazing when you realize and you're intentional that, that we serve an audience of one, and it's Jesus. Mm -hmm. It makes it easy. And once I get to going, you know, it's like, I feel like I'm preaching to thousands, which I am, you know, hundreds of thousands. So I just realized after that getting over the empty pew and i'm a natural extrovert but i realize not everything that i do is for the glory of god and people just chiming in so I, i've kind of gotten over it so each week i look forward to it so okay. the energy comes from within and i don't look to get energy from people uh i guess anymore <laughs> so it's been yeah. a, a life changing thing for me yeah thank you thank you for sharing that um, right. any other, any other comments on what your experience has been like, um, preaching yeah. to that empty pew? I'll just speak to it very quickly. I, I'm not doing it at the sanctuary, but at home, but it's by myself. For me, it's really, it's really, really draining. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I feel very tired afterwards. And I think it's because I don't, I don't have any human connection. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I think I'm doing an okay job, not great, but okay job having my energy level up during the thing that I'm doing. But after that, I feel, it's like I've been beaten with a, you know, mm. a sock full of batteries. I just really feel it. And so yeah. I, 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 I get the incessant sense that other people are that way too. It's been, it's been hard. It's for been me. hard, yeah, yeah. I, and I mentioned St. Uh, Luke and um, Pastor um, Bowie, because in the African-American tradition, when you're preaching, the more amens, you know, the more you can go right on to the next point. But for me as an African-American pastor, when I'm preaching, if I don't have that interaction, it, it is really, really hard, really hard. We have another question that came up a lot in the chat that I want to put out there for you is, what about Holy Communion and Holy Week? What are some of your thoughts on, um, how do you plan on doing Holy Communion? Um, Nashville, the Board of Discipleship put out a um, post on last night I read, and it was by Dr. Cynthia Wilson, and she talked about the love feast. I, I hope that you've seen it. It's in the North Texas Conference clergy uh, page. But so what, what, are, what are your plans for Holy Communion? Um, uh, uh, Treach and Flower Mound, we're actually asking our uh, congregation from home this Sunday to, uh, if they can, to get bread, and grape juice um, of any kind. And, and we will spend time in the context of worship on the, the following Sunday, the first Sunday of the month in April, to, to bless the elements through the, the screen or phone or whatever. Um, and for families at home or individuals at home to, uh, to experience the, the sacrament, um, uh, in in the best way we can to try and you know uh, to try and help them get that same experience or if they're with families for the families to serve each other uh, in in that way. Okay, thanks. Who else? I was uh, part of the 2013 consultation on online communion along with Bishop McKee, and um, the discussion in Nashville regarding this was uh, very much a negative one. Uh, and the principal concern was there were some theological issues and people not understand this idea of at distance consecration. Uh, but uh, the, the, the actual practical concern had to do with our ecumenical partners, the Lutherans, the Episcopalians, especially with regards to the idea of at distance consecration. But something that they have that we don't have is reserve sacrament, the ability to consecrate elements and then hold them for a, a rather lengthy period of time. And, and um, we don't allow that. We do allow extending the table pretty quickly after a service, but, but not uh, a lengthy reserve sacrament process. Uh, 
Um, they also allow for veneration of the sacrament. Uh, and uh, our, our understanding and interpretation, or at least the Judicial Council's interpretation of, of our uh, articles of religion uh, say that we're not allowed to do that either. Um, so it's a challenge. Um, the concept is at distance, not that the people in their homes are consecrating the elements, but that as the congregation gathers virtually all over the place and watches the stream, the presiding minister consecrates the elements, prays the great thanksgiving, prays the apocalyptical prayer over the elements, and not just the elements there are consecrated, but the elements everywhere there where you're watching are also included in that consecration. That's the idea. Um, it, it, to say that it violates our theology of the Eucharist is questionable. I don't think it does. A lot of people think it does. And so it's a matter of um, being willing to step out in faith and trust in God's grace more than the rules and regulations of people. Uh, the bishop did uh, relinquish or re loosen the prohibition that the Council of Bishops issued a prohibition on the practice in 2013, which was extended in 14 and then re-extended in 16. Uh, bishop McKee and several other bishops have uh, temporarily released that prohibition so that we may do so. If you do so, make sure that you give good directions ahead of time, that you explain what you're doing and why you're doing it, that this is for an extraordinary time in an extraordinary circumstance. Mm -hmm. Be very clear about what you're doing and try to include as many as you can in the process um, uh, in terms of planning and execution. If you're celebrating in a, in, a, in a church setting and you have multiple people there, be very careful about maintaining a separation distance so that if you preside over elements, that's fine. Uh, then you leave the, the immediacy of the table and then someone else comes up and they receive and commune themselves while you're doing that. And encourage the people at home to then receive after the uh, consecration. Um, it's, it's, keep in mind, we're kind of on the, the cutting edge of theology when we do this, if we do this. If you're uncomfortable doing this, don't do it. If you have any questions about it, don't do it. If you feel like you're comfortable to do it and others have you've already done it, and that's wonderful, then go ahead and, and try this uh, because it gives, a, it gives a point of contact, an experiential point of contact with people who are trapped in their homes. That's, that's all I can say right now. And I would encourage all of you to look, read that article that's there um, because they have, they have changed so many things and, um, they're really lenient right now in what, what we can do. But read the article from Dr. Cynthia Wilson Felder uh, last night. It, it gave me a lot of hope. Okay, so what, who else? Who else wants to speak to Holy Communion? How do you plan to do it? Or well, do you plan to do it? One Holy point, a question was asked in the chat by Liz with regards to consecrating the to-go communion cups and wafers through a Facebook Live before April the 5th and then offering people to come pick them up. Um, that actually there's actually language in the this holy mystery statement of the church that really would exclude that practice mm. uh, as it states very carefully and very clearly that that that's reserved sacrament and the judicial council has already ruled that is invalid um so if it says it specifically don't do it in that published statement then i would argue against doing that um but, the, but this Holy Ministry doesn't speak to the practice of online communion. So you know, that's, that's the, the gray zone that we live in. Yeah, so, we're, we're really in an unknown area right now. Okay. So at, at, uh, if, if I may, at, at Saxe, we, okay. we celebrate communion every week in, in all of our services. And now two weeks ago, we did, the, the very first week we were doing this, we had, a skeleton, we had kind of a skeleton crew and we did not do communion. And, uh, but then after Bishop McKee had sort of said, hey, go ahead and go ahead and do it for this season of ministry. Last week we did uh, celebrate communion and I just wanted to share just a little bit of our experience just to, uh, to sit, spare anyone, uh, you know, some of the maybe little difficulty that I experienced us having. And that was, I really wish we had had uh, or had thought about sort of Andrew's advice from earlier of practicing everything. I really wish we had practiced uh, mm -hmm. and had really discussed in detail everything we were going to do 
because we really ended up sort of having to adapt at the, you know, we had decided we were going to do it, but we had not practiced how to do it and sort of really gone over the specific details of what it would look like. And so what, what that, the result of that was sort of a mad dash at the last minute to figure out how do we do this without, uh, without getting too close to each other. Uh, and our, our little quick, quick and dirty solution was we found, uh, we had some small cups, little, you know, like little plastic cups, we had some little plates, we had some, uh, some wafers uh, that we used that are gluten free. And so we kind of set those we quickly set those out on the table. So we could have individual, um, you know, um, uh, you know, people could come up and then really it was after the, the liturgy was done, each person kind of came up individually um, you know, not, it's not ideal. It'd be better to be able to hand it to someone, but mm -hmm. that was the best thing we could do with this space. And so we kind of came up one at a time and picked it up. And I really wish we had discussed, you know, a way of maybe acknowledging each person with the, you know, the body of Christ, mm -hmm. the blood of Christ. And I don't think we'd like, I'd like for us to try that this week that really, uh, but so it was, it was messy, uh, but it worked. And I think we all, us at home and there experienced it as a means of grace. And so, um, um, yeah, so I just want to say Andrew's advice about practicing everything, it, this goes for Holy Communion too. So please don't, don't, don't do what we did. Please practice it beforehand uh, and uh, just kind of talk about every little element before you do it. And I think it'll, I think we'll all be blessed. We'll be blessed by it either way, uh, but I think it'll be, um, <laughs> we'll have fewer weird feelings about it later if we practice. So Nick, did the persons at home partake using whatever they had at home? Yeah, that basically, yeah, but just whatever the closest things you could find. Uh, yeah. And so, for instance, my, my wife was at home uh, quarantined and we didn't have we didn't have any grape juice. Uh, we had some wine, but we didn't really think of that. Uh, but uh, and I know there's other questions about, you know, using wine in our tradition. Anyway, that's another thing. But so she had we had some different fruit juice. We had some cran cherry juice, sugar free cran cherry <laughs> and some uh, some like uh, low carb protein bread. <laughs> Because we're okay. not eating carbs right now, so we had protein bread and cran cherry juice, um, and uh, you know it was a blessing. So, okay. yeah. Thanks. Thanks. That's great. Um, I mentioned this in the chat. Uh, we've our plan for this next week is to invite people to um, uh, to gather what they have at their home. Uh, it's our pantry communion, and and so we're we talked about how to do it safely with our worship team, and so we're inviting the worship team. To bring things from their pantry up to the service with them, um, just uh, both for safety, but also for solidarity with the community. I'll still break the bread and and lift the cup, but then um, our team will be taking the things that they've brought with them from home in the same way that people in their living rooms will as well. Okay, thank you. Anyone else want to share? Um, this Maybe you can. Allen. Yeah, I was going to say, JD, tell us about your cool idea. Um, well, I think this can definitely work in my context and other small churches. Um, I think it would take some communication to make sure people are com comfortable with it. Because after I posted on the chat, I thought about how uh, Facebook Live and uh, YouTube are uh, uh, public forums. But I had mentioned I was thinking about uh, asking our folks to email or text me if they would like to be named specifically and like, and to go through the motions of placing the bread and juice before them as if they were coming forward to the to the to uh, receive communion um and just to make it more uh give a more communal feel and make it more personal for them as well um so and i mean like we would do i mean it'd be like first name only so i'm not broadcasting people's first and last name so they can be tracked down after someone worships us <laughs> watches the service or anything like that but um so it was just uh, that's what i gave wh what i was looking to do okay thanks jd okay any other comments that that you're doing okay let's anyone want to anyone able to speak to um anything creative that you're going to try out just for Holy Week um, beyond just Sunday morning and how to connect the community during Holy Week and uh, what your ideas are there? On uh, Monday, Thursday, I'm going to do a broadcast from my study here with the uh, backdrop being my worship center. And um, I'm 
I'm going to talk about the Lord's Supper, its theology, our understanding of it, do a little bit of teaching on the subject of it, and how, uh, how Christ instituted it. And um, we'll talk about that way. I, I had normally we have a Monday Thursday service uh, and with the Eucharist, but I don't think I'm going to do that from my home by myself. I have a problem with that. Uh, and, and so, but that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to do a teaching session um, on live stream on Facebook and discuss what the um, what we believe about communion and its practice and why we practice it the way we practice it. And, and that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Others? We're um, gonna give a virtual choir a try for, uh, for Good Friday. Um, have our choir do a couple of pieces and record themselves singing their parts and then blend them together. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so cool. Hmm. Okay. So we're we're gonna play with Friday night um, at our context of doing a fireside chat. So take a couple of us that are on staff and gonna sit around a fire pit and remember about what it was like in that on that Good Friday when people were standing around, kind of in that stunned moment mm -hmm. after the crucifixion. So it'll be intimate and we'll do it on Facebook Live, but it'll be with just a few people, but it, around an actual fire pit with some of us having a conversation and thinking about that evening, just doing some reflection. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, great. Someone else was coming in at the same time. I was just going to say that uh, those of us who are going to record it and then upload it, that, uh, that we can take, uh, take advantage of the affordages of, of this system. For example, um, we don't have to be in our sanctuary. That is, we pastors, we mentioned about being in homes, but we could be at other places. Uh, um, I liked uh, his idea of for Good Friday. That's, that's fantastic. Um, this past Sunday, I did mine on the front steps of our church. Uh, but you could go out to the lake. You could go uh, to various places and and show things that you couldn't usually show on a regular Sunday morning. So th that makes it interesting. Also too, uh, if you start there, that attracts people's attention and they want to stop and might want to, if they're scrolling, they want to stop and, and watch and pay attention to the service. Okay, all right, yeah. Okay, so let me ask one last question and then um, we can open it up for anything else we haven't covered. The vision of our center, the CCD, is to gather new faces in new spaces for Christian discipleship. Can you talk about what that means, how you may be doing that beyond the Sunday morning worship service and share with us some models that you may be seeing someone else do or that you may be doing yourself? How are you making disciples during this time of the virus? Um, yes, I think, I think we've all seen, uh, people utilizing zoom for Bible studies and, and things like that. Oh, my mic is up there. I think we've seen people using zoom for, um, doing Bible studies and small gatherings. I'm going to try that myself this evening. Um, but I've also, um, made it available that if somebody would like to schedule like a pastoral visit. Uh, that we can also do that one-on-one -on -one through Zoom um, and uh, just trying to make ourselves available in whatever way we can uh, is kind of important. So okay. um, that's all I can think of. Okay. Someone else would like to share? Yes. I know you, you guys are working on making disciples out there in this time of isolation still. Um, so what are some of the things you're, you're thinking about doing or that you're doing? Well, so, I'll, I'll, I'll chime in, okay. Brother Masters. Um, 
what we've decided to do from a congregational care standpoint, um, our congregational care pastor, she's been sending out uh, letters, e electronic letters to the congregation, but also um, she's been sending out, um, heart, we've been sending out letters as well, a snail mail. But what we've decided to do as a pastoral team is to divide the names of certain members and each pastor is calling people, just letting them know we, we, we're thinking about you, we're caring about you, do you need anything? Also, what we've done from our spiritual opportunities, we are pushing everything via Zoom, uh, our prayer line, which is kind of like a conference call line. So we have tonight midweek worship, um, which, which would be through our prayer line. And also we have our small groups, our steady meeting okay. via Zoom or through our prayer line. So we're still making the cycle. Um, so we love the technology as much as we can. Good, good, good. Great. Okay. Anybody else? So what I'm not sure that this falls under new faces and new spaces, because I guess that's a kind of a weird question right now. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, and this will fall more, I guess, on the evangelism side than the, than the sort of the discipleship uh, side. But mm -hmm. one thing I've, I've, I've been doing, and really it's just, you know, I've just been, I've been sharing a lot of stuff. I've been sort of making a few uh, videos, like recording myself singing and that kind of stuff and putting it on I just on my personal Facebook profile. And, and I didn't really have really planned much other than, you know, the, pe the people at church who are my Facebook friends could see that, but I've actually been getting a, a good response from people who are not uh, members of my church, people who are outside. And I've even gotten, you know, heard from someone who said, Hey, you know, I've been an atheist for a long time, but mm -hmm. I'm kind of, um, I don't know. I'm kind of finding myself on this, uh, mm. on this, you know, something's happening and, and kind of reaching out in that way. And so, uh, and I don't know, we'll, I don't know what it will lead to, but I think, um, yeah, just sharing, uh, cause doing things I've never done before on my own profile has, has you know, could potentially reach beyond the members of my congregation and, mm. and reach out to people, uh, for, you know, to at least help them come into that initial, um, relationship with, with Christianity and with Christ. And so, uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But that was just kind of, I didn't even realize that that was a possibility that someone mm. might be, you know, that I wasn't expecting might be uh, blessed mm. through that stuff. So maybe that's the thought, just kind of, you know, whatever you put out for your congregation. I mean, maybe what if you put it out more broadly than that, however you can do that to, because people are stuck at home and they're looking and they're worried and they're, yeah. they're wondering what it's all about. <laughs> so. Right, right, right. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. For our congregational calls, uh, we've got, we're inviting congregants to be a part of that too um and so we we have a registration form and then kind of screen a little bit um but we'll pair people up with some of our more is potentially isolated or vulnerable members to maintain a weekly relation phone call relationship with them and that's been really encouraging um for our congregation members too because they are looking for ways to help out and to be a part and feel connected also yeah yeah thanks yeah one thing for sure in this time of isolation we have to find a way to reach out we can't touch them necessarily but we must reach out reach out okay be on social media enough right now you know yes um, right one, one thing that i'm going to do here in just a little bit i'm going to jump off of here early is because like i'm hosting a workout online okay um i know in the future I, i've tried to do this in the past and it, it didn't really work out but now that we have to use social media, I'm going to go ahead and use social media to do like cooking stuff. I love to cook. So being able to engage with individuals with their, um, um, their hobbies, their passions, you know, those things that they may like to do would draw a different response, you know, than yeah. strictly doing worship services online. Um, I've got friends, I've got friends who don't go to church. I've got friends who are atheists who may not watch me play acoustic guitar and sing some worship but they will get on social media for a brief devotional and a quick workout and you know it doesn't have to be too long mine's going to be less than 30 minutes okay uh leave your contact information or your site uh on the chat box so we can get that and put it on our web page so that people that's on the call might want to join you Okay, sure. so I'm going to turn it back over to Matt so we can talk about, see if there's anything we missed or anything else that you guys may want to talk about before we end our call. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I from what I can tell in our chat, we've we've covered most um, most of the questions that have come in. Um, like I said, when I started, we uh, put out there on our on the clergy Facebook and and on our individual from the CCD Facebook. If there's any other conversations like this that you would like to see facilitated in our conference or just opportunities for us to connect as clergy, encourage each other, get some face time, like we we want to use whatever um, whatever resources we can to 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 support that and and to support you all in the same way that you all are supporting the folks in your church. So yeah. um, please don't be strangers. Reach out. Um, you have my phone number. You can call me. You can text me. You can email me. And um, we're we're really wanting to leverage um, our ability to network um, in this time in in ways that uh, will be a blessing for you all and help share some resources and some of the just great work that you all are doing. Um, just a special shout out to uh, Andrew and Greg and Manya for taking the time to uh, just share with us all the, the work that you all are doing and just really appreciate that. Um, and our center director just jumped on, so I am gonna <laughs> let Owen speak uh, and close us out. Owen, it's yours. Well, thanks. Yeah, the cabinet's now on a 10 minute break. And so I was able to hop on here and I was okay. just thrilled at the uh, participation that we've had. And again, I want to echo what Matt said. Appreciate Matt's leadership as Diana and Liliana's from our center and putting this together. Uh, appreciate uh, what, what Greg did, and what Andrew did, what Manya did. And again, we're going to be following up on this. The cabinet is is planning some gatherings and so there's going to be a gathering with the cabinet and then a gathering with the bishop so be uh, looking for that in the near future we had some people that were unable to get on because our subscription is just up to a hundred and so today we're upping that to up to 500 and so that we can have larger zooms and we're also in the process of exploring other alternatives so that the, um, so that the cabinet can interact with more and so uh, you know, be looking for that. And, but again, we're glad we were able to come together today. I know that we are entering into just uncharted waters with lots of pressures that are upon you as pastors to be leading your church, uh, financial pressures that I know your churches um, are bound to be feeling as well as the family pressures that many of us are, are dealing with when kids are supposed to be in schools, but yet they're at home. And so I thank y'all for gathering together, supporting one another in this season. And I, I'm glad I had this opportunity to be on here and at least get to, to pray with you. So let us pray. Merciful Lord, I do thank you for the, the way that your church is responding in this season. You have a world that's scared, a world that is, is being pushed into isolation, but you're using your church and using technology to, to connect people with one another and, and, and bring hope in a, in a, in tough times for our world. Lord, I pray for the, the pastors that are on here that are being called to lead their communities in this time and even reach new people who are, who are searching for answers, searching for hope during this season. Lord, I thank you for the leadership of the, of the CCD of the North Texas Conference. I pray your guidance upon them. Lord, I pray for these pastors. I pray for their families, Lord. Uh, may you keep them safe, keep them healthy, Lord, providing for their, their every need that they have. Lord, I pray for our churches, our parishioners. Lord, may they see that that uh, that you are continuing to connect in new ways, and may you may you feed them spiritually through these new means in this time, and may they be instruments of of your care, your love, your mercy, your grace in this world. Lord, I ask you to watch and care over all of us, and guide us in this season, and Lord, may your may your your light just shine in our world that is full of of dark news. Lord, we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless y'all. Amen. Thanks, y'all. Thank Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Right, God bless y'all. Thank you. Later, man. Thank you, Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. In case anyone... Bye.